so welcome back to the channel guys and yet another chess video today in this video i'm going to show you one of my game which i just played a few days ago in which i uh, sacrificed my bishop to deliver a brutal checkmate and there might be some new chess terms uh, which you will hear for the first time in this video and i will explain them in the at the end of this video so anyways in this game i was playing with the white pieces i started off with the king's pawn opening e4 we have e5 on the board and now i played knight 2 f3 d6 which is i think the field or defense open anyways i continued with bishop to c4 and opponent played h6 now the logic uh, the main idea behind h6 is uh, had my opponent played knight 2 simply played knight to f6 in this position i had opportunity to go knight to g5 and uh, create enormous pressure on, on the weak f7 pawn so if you are a beginner h6 move is completely fine but if you want to learn uh, play if you want to play aggressively against the fried lever attack yes after knight to f6 when white plays knight to g5 it is known as the fried liver attack then you can learn the traxler counter attack and you uh, you might find you you can find many videos on youtube that cover the traxler counter attack so do check them out after watching this video so anyways after h6 i quietly developed my knight on c3 opponent played c6 and uh, I, I am advising you whenever you see the c6 move as white you must play uh, d4 immediately and the same go same thing goes for black whenever black sees the c3 move black must reply with d5 so uh, in this position i need 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 not to play the move d5 d4 because i had sufficient i have sufficient control over the d5 square but anyways i still played the move d4 and opponent plays bishop to g4 pinning my knight and i played h3 kicking away the bishop bishop moves to h5 maintaining the pin i played g4 again push uh, kicking away the bishop bishop retreated to g6 and uh, in this position i pushed the pawns on my king side because i just i haven't castled yet and i will castle long in this game because i already moved the pawns on my king side of the king side anyways i played d takes c5 and after d takes c5 as you can see the e5 pawn was free for me to take but uh, i didn't wanted the queen trade so i just played bishop to d2 quietly developing a piece anyways bishop to d6 was the move that my opponent played simply defending and now i pushed h4 opponent played knight to f6 because after h4 the uh, g4, g4 pawn became undefended and uh, opponent attacked it via knight to f6 and i simply played queen to e2 uh, yes i just blundered a pawn in this uh, game anyways uh, uh, after knight takes g4 opponent took my uh, free pawn i pushed h5 attacking attacking the bishop opponent plays bishop to h7 keeping it keeping the bishop on the uh, b1 to h7 diagonal anyways i played knight to h4 and opponent retreated his knight to f6 i just castled queen side in this position and opponent pushed b5 uh, attacking my bishop and opponent all also started his attack on my king anyways i played b3 and opponent pushed a5 i played a3 uh, to uh, make a escape square for my bishop because had i not played a3 in this position i would have uh, my bishop would have been tra trapped after the move a4 so after a3 opponent pushed b4 and now i played knight to a4 opponent played b takes a3 
I played B takes A3, opponent played Bishop takes on A3, check. And I sli slided my king over to B1. And I just lost an yet another pawn. And in this, yeah. So anyways, going to C7, my opponent continued with the move going to C7. And I played b b king to a2 attacking the bishop. Bishop moves to b4. And trying to trade off my dark squared bishop. But, uh, which uh, will never happen in the game. Uh, anyways, I played queen to c4. Uh, pressure, uh, uh, building pressure on the weak f7 pawn. Anyways, the opponent, my opponent castled king side. And now I played knight to g6 attacking the rook. And in this position my opponent had the opportunity to trade his dull bishop with my really active knight. But anyways opponent played knight b to d7 completely forgetting that his rook wasn't defended. I took the rook via knight takes f8 and opponent recaptured via rook takes f8. And after I played in this position, I played f3 to support my central pawn. And now opponent played c5. And had I played the move c3 in this position, I would have trapped my opponent's bishop. But anyways, I continued with bishop to e3 because I, uh, I in this position I was thinking not to trade the dark squared bishops. And anyways, the opponent played knight to b6. In this position, I was forced to trade off the knights because my queen was also under attack. So uh, anyways, I played knight takes on b6. And opponent, uh, uh, I, uh, opponent played queen takes on b6. And uh, now finally I pushed c3. But it gave open opponent the chance to play a4. So... In this position, I have I have question I have a question for you. Would would you either take the pawn on a4, uh, or would you retreat? Well, I retreated with the bishop because had I take taken the pawn on a4, uh, I would have opened the line uh, opened the the a file for my opponent's rook to attack, and that would have been deadly for me. So anyways I slided my bishop over to c2 and opponent took my pawn on c3 via bishop takes on c3. I don't know why my opponent play, uh, sacrificed his bishop that way because he was simply down a piece from here and I also had the bishop pair. Anyways after bishop takes on c3 I played queen takes on c3. And opponent was also down a rook in this position. So he needed to preserve this bishop. He needed some pieces to fight. But anyways after bishop takes on c3. Immediate threat is queen to b2 checkmate. So I just grabbed the bishop with queen takes on c3. And opponent, opponent plays queen to a6. And I played bishop to d3 kicking away the queen. And the queen uh, slided over to a8. And in this position I had a choice to make. Uh, black had two pawns undefended. One is, one is on c5. And other uh, one was on c5. And other was on e5. And of course I took the e5 pawn. Because it was a central pawn. And c5 pawn was a wing pawn. And in this position... Uh, black's a4 pawns and c5 pawns were actually giving my king some protection. So that's why I wanted to preserve that pawn. So I took the e5 pawn via queen takes c5 and opponent played king to h8. And I played the stunning move in this position. Bishop takes on h6. And, and the logic is simple. If the g7 pawn captures the bishop, which is the only way to, uh, way to capture the bishop, I will simply grab the knight and opponent will have an exposed king. And uh, so my opponent play, played the, the worst move in this position, bishop to g8, which was actually a big blunder. And now we have a mate and four. 
starting with the stunning move bishop takes on g7 check and after king takes on g7 h6 check and no matter wherever the king goes nothing can save the king from being check getting checkmated so in this position opponent played king to g6 and i finished it off with queen to f5 checkmate what an amazing game it was and you might be asking what is the meaning of exposed king so in ch you in chess an exposed king is a king which is really weak weak and none of the pieces are defending the king so we have great chances of attacking and checkmating that king so you in short in short words an exposed king is a weak king and you have uh, great chances of attacking and checkmating that king so that was a brutal attacking game from me so thanks for watching uh, uh, guys and i want you to like this video and share this video and i want you to subscribe to my channel and keep supporting guys and in this position i had an opportunity to also bring my rook into the game in this position actually to finish it uh, the finish of the game faster but still i played at 6 check and uh, the game ended in a few moves after this so thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video